Hey. Oh, I like that guy. Hey. That guy, that's an affable guy. Yeah, we like that guy. Not the yelling guy we often have. <laughs> often. Yeah, it is episode 70. What? Of Alex oh. and Jim. Analyze. B- Billy. Joel. Lyrics. I oh, I only said part of Joe. Joel. <laughs> we gotta go back. That's okay. Christy Brinkley's show. <laughs> Christy Brinkley analyzes Billy Joe lyrics. <laughs> uh, nothing comes up when she Googles it. And yeah, and her comments are always like, this seems fine. I don't know. It's a lot of words. Yeah. I think he plays the piano in this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Um, huh? Number 70. Number 70, yeah. Are we in our second season? <laughs> so, Do we have seasons? Those are a lot long seasons. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If if, a British sitcom, we'd be in our 14th season. Yeah, right? our 14. What do they call? They don't call them seasons, series. right? Series. series 14. Yeah, exactly. And and it's only because we were forced to come back because every British star is like, that's enough, right? They don't want to do any more for some reason. Because they're all on five other shows. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very busy. <laughs> British TV is filled with some beautifully talented, ugly people. Yeah. It's great. And they let them run wild. Yeah. yeah. I was we were I was talking to Seth about this, like the great things about. British TV show, murder shows especially. And one is that nobody gets shot. <laughs> it, it would be a whole plot point to explain how they got a gun. So you're just like, ah, there's been a hammering. <laughs> Someone's been hammered to death. Oh. Uh, I understand how we got that. And the other is that they have like makeout scenes with real sixes. Like 55 year old sixes. <laughs> have like emotional passionate love lives yeah realized they're not like isn't this funny that these people might have sexual feelings <laughs> but, but it's played for real that's it, yeah and that makes those shows feel realistic yeah in a way that american tv is not trying for yeah it's every american male is married to celia ward or somebody <laughs> right. where yep. at any age you're like no i don't care how old she is she is never in your you're never in her league no yeah. you're not you're not pulling ward <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great by the way the last two monologues of Seth were just beautiful oh thank just you such beautiful things the nft trump monologue was really good and then i'm trying to remember the one from the night before but anyway, they were both wonderful. They were both very enjoyable. It's very fun these days. Yeah. Yeah, listen, you guys are outside of the yoke of it having to be about the same, same subject every night. So if it happens to be about that subject, it's fine. And there's new ground even with that subject because now the ground is, you know, look how much more unhinged this human being has become. Yeah, and it's nice to not have the imminent threat of him like having power. Yeah. Like, oh, now he's back to being, you know, we, and it was so great when he was running for president early on. Yeah. And we're, oh, we can't win, but this is hilarious. And then he won. And we're like, oh, shit. This is less <laughs> funny now. Yeah. A lot less funny, but with all the danger and whatnot. Yeah. And now it kind of feels like it's slid back to he's campaigning ostensibly again. But he's not, which is funny. Uh, and he's like tired and weird. <laughs> I So I'll tell you, there's a here's my little Trump theory, other than my theory that he's a bad person. Oh. Uh, <laughs> my other theory is very similarly to the gay marriage uh, kerfluffle with the Republican Party. Uh, Uh, I think in the long run, Trump is going to end up having been very good for America. 
like yes like a, a spot on an x-ray yep <laughs> exactly <laughs> fuck yes yep oh, yeah, we got to get to the hospital yep this and, is uh, i hope yeah i hope our country decides to do chemo yeah instead of just like oh we'll just go parasailing until we die <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean that's a good theory yeah a lot I of mean, stuff it was a lot of uh light shed yeah gay marriage would not be legal right now if republicans hadn't been such jerks yeah yeah they, they forced the conversation the other thing is that Democrats at the time, people don't remember this, but Democrats at the time pushed a version that was essentially the gay marriage version of don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Because what they wanted to do was to say, hey, we're going to make it so that civil unions give you the same protections. Right. But we're not going to call it marriage. So you don't have to freak out. Yep. So you can have and. You can call it a marriage at your house. That's fine. <laughs> right. But you'll have property rights. And Republicans, for a, some reason, took a weird stand and were like, no, you can't have separate but equal, which <laughs> they're right. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Right. You know, we all remember the whole water fountain thing. You know, that was you know. <laughs> personally, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, they yeah, they pushed it and they were like, Yeah, you can't have separate but equal, and everybody went, All right, uh equal then. And we're like, Well, no, yeah. not that either. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's not what we meant. <laughs> we meant to go back in the cave. Yeah, it's so very strange. And I think this is very similar. Um, switching gears. Did you watch SNL? I did. Did you see the do you remember? Of course, I asked you if you watched it and then if you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch it and see it, whether okay. I remember. That's the best way to watch things is when you watch and see. I, I recommend. Uh, the Christmas Carol sketch. Yes. Did you enjoy it? Nah. I'm trying to remember if I enjoyed it. Thinking about it now, I'm like, eh. But so, watching it, I was like, oh, this is fun and stupid. Yeah. So here's here's what I thought, because I saw that sketch and I found it amusing and something about it bugged me. And I wasn't sure what, because it wasn't Marty's performance. Marty was great. Always. And it wasn't the over the top slapsticky nature of the sketch, because it's Marty. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get Martin Short loves some slapstick and he's great at it going to get crazy and i thought oh here's what's interesting that bothers me about this sketch and i don't believe anybody stole anything but i was like oh this is that thing that happens in the, in comedy this is an old simpsons oh interesting and that's what dawned on me and i will tell you so uh a beloved billionaire came to springfield and it was like a Richard Branson. Is that his name, Branson? Uh-huh. It was a Branson type millionaire, you know, over the top, hot air balloons and whatever. Sexy. And, yeah. And he did this thing where he was giving money from his hot air balloon. He was giving people money and, you know, saying, giving money away and being that. And then Mr. Burns decided he wanted to be beloved. So, he got in a balloon and he get he started throwing out silver coins instead of oh, regular yeah. money. And it immediately embedded in Lenny's head. Okay. And then Lenny, and Lenny's like, oh my God, take it out, take it out. And he takes it out and starts bleeding. He goes, no, 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 put it back in. He puts it back in. He goes, phew. And then Carl goes, you need to go to the hospital. And Lenny goes, you need to shut up. <laughs> and then a lady passed by and he tipped it like a hat and there was a spurt of blood. Right. It was the exact same joke. It was coins being thrown. And then I was like, oh, and Mr. Burns is Scrooge. That's the whole <laughs> inspiration a- for his character. Yeah. His character is Scrooge, just never reformed. Right. And I was like, yeah, one of the hard things about stand up, because I don't think anybody stole nothing. 
Oh yeah, most of the time. I, why would you steal stand up? It's so right. get caught so fast. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's I can't believe there's not a, really a, a word or a phrase for it. Just having the same fucking idea. Yeah. It's, there's a there is a limited number of ideas. Yeah. Um I think people outside of comedy don't realize that. They just think like you could do anything. Why would you end up doing the same thing somebody else did? And it's like, well, there's only so many observations to make. And yeah. you, do you know that um, in like writers' rooms in LA for sure, and some in New York, uh, a lot of showrunners have banned their writers from saying that The Simpsons had done something because <laughs> they kind of have all surrender to the idea that the simpsons did everything <laughs> they did they did every joke they did every manifestation of every joke so like if you saw it in the simpsons just shut up <laughs> we're this is different because we thought of it without you know yeah so it's like i mean simpsons did it is like uh an idiomatic expression at this point <laughs> yeah it well, I so there is a little bit of an expression. The expression is parallel thinking. People will do that. They'll say parallel thinking. And Lord, it is just true. I it was funny though, because when I had that, I was a little I wasn't mad because I know better. And I yeah. was just like, ah, oh, that's a shame. And it's, it's a sh shame. yeah. I wonder if they'll get yelled at. I'm sure they will by like internet uh, dwellers. It feels like so far, I'm the first one to notice this because it's not, and I haven't tweeted about it. Yeah. Because I'm not inclined to do that. I'm not inclined to do anything like that because I don't care. Yeah. And you understand how it happens. Exactly. I don't care in that sense. And I care also in the sense I do care about, man, why am I going to make life hard on a writer? You know, <laughs> that's, you know. Yeah. Who probably came up with it on their own and just like hadn't seen that one. Or they did, but or they, they saw it 15 years ago. So easy to do, where it just like lodges in the back of your head somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I, I will sometimes Google, if I get a certain idea, I've gotten in the habit, because I'm working on a screenplay now, and when I got the idea, I was like, oh, this feels like a really good idea for a screenplay. And because it feels like a really good idea for a screenplay, it really feels like it must exist. Yeah, let me just quickly check. <laughs> and I checked, and there wasn't any permutation of it. Great. And I did a number of searches. I can because I, it's heartbreaking to me because this has happened where I'll start a project, and then deeper into the project than I would like to be is when, <laughs> hey, did you know that so and so did that exact? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. I will tell you a funny story. I was at a script, a sketch show for a friend. Hold on, let me lift the cat out. See a cat. It's later, the cat. Don't um, let the door. I was at a sketch show with a friend for a friend who their dumb live sketch show, and some of it was funny, and some of it wasn't. Just like all sketch comedy. Um, there was a hot girl in their sketch group, and I thought at the time, well, this girl is too hot to be in a sketch group. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> She is clearly someone that there's a number of guys in this dumb group who hope to have sex with her and they're not going to. Ha ha. Please <laughs> write a sketch about that. I will enjoy that. But she did this sketch she had apparently thought of where she played the part of a lady who was oh. also a chicken. Oh. She was <laughs> a chicken lady, if you will. Lady, huh? Or it does ring a bell, doesn't it? Yeah, a lady who was also a chicken. And she was a chicken in the same way that Mark McKinney was a chicken. <laughs> oh, boy. Not a different sort of way you could be. Like, she wasn't more chicken than lady, which would yeah. be a difference. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it was almost like she went to the store and was like, oh, I can't believe a costume already exists. <laughs> oh, a tutorial video. I'll watch this. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. And so I watched and I'm with my friends and I'm like, two seconds in, I'm like, kids in the hall, right? And they're like, yeah, kids in the hall. Like, are they, is it going to be something where that's, that's the joke? Right. No, I guess they're just doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was just very funny. I'm like, there's, and that to me, I'm like, that, I get parallel thinking, but no. Yeah. Also, due diligence. Like, yeah, that person for sure would just stole it and was fine with stealing. <laughs> but I do have, I tell my writers all the time, like, before your, you know, your sketch is at Sketch Read and we like it and we're like, okay, well, let's do it. Go Google. And make sure it hasn't been done. Yeah. You know, I'm like, if something's close or similar, that fine. But if it's exactly the joke played exactly the way you did it, mm -hmm. you got to find out. Yeah. Because, you know, not for even moral reasons or anything. It's like, well, I don't want to get yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> And it does happen. Um, you know, I tweeted something a long time ago, some dumb joke about the Trivago guy. Remember the Trivago guy, everybody? Remind me the Trivago guy. He was just the spokesman for Trivago, and he had like kind of like a five o'clock shadow for some reason. Yeah. And he was a little bit cheesy, and I tweeted something about how he seemed like a guy who would be a little too eager to drive the babysitter home. And uh, then I got a text from one of my writers. He's like, hey, uh, I tweeted that like six weeks ago. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Sorry. It, obviously, I it was in my head. And my brain didn't recognize it as a memory. It was like, hey, and here's an original thought. Yeah. Nope, that's a memory. Yeah. Well, these things happen. It does. It's something that occurred to me many, many years ago, almost maybe as a child, watching the original Star Trek series when people would talk about what great imaginations they had and what an interest. And I, okay. and I always looked at the show and thought, well, clearly imagination is limited because every alien they come up with mm -hmm. is just a permutation of qualities and species that already exist. So it's not that imaginative. It's just a mixing. Yeah. I mean, Vulcans, it's just they have funny ears. It's, yeah. They're funny ears and they're distant. So they're your dad with funny ears. <laughs> it's a dad planet. Yeah, it's a planet of your dads where <laughs> they, oh, dads. entire planet of, of beings who would like you to talk to your mother about it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, look exactly like a human being, but oh, their blood is uh, green. Yeah. All right. Hey, you want to hear a bit of trivia, by the way? Green blood is a thing. I didn't know that for a long time. There are animals with green blood. I didn't. I don't. Yep. That's, that's news to me. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. Yeah. They, it, so they must have somebody on who wrote for the original series must have picked that because it makes sense. Sure. Because it turns out blood has evolved independently multiple times wow it just must be so damn useful for a thing that is em <laughs> emerging and ours is hopefully i'm saying this right ours is iron based which is why it's the color it is right there is copper based blood that and it's be green cool. huh tell me that's not actually kind of interesting no that's definitely interesting and cool yeah, I fucking love evolution. It's fucking great. Evolution doesn't make you mad because evolution doesn't ever, you don't ever go, why is the world unfair, evolution? You never say that. <laughs> no, but had, nothing has less of an agenda. Yeah. And evolution is like, look, I'm just, uh, it was an accident. Yeah. Why is there cancer, evolution? I already told you, evolution. I already told you that's. The thing is the reason. It's a copying <laughs> error. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same reason you failed in college. Many copying errors. <laughs> that's all. Oh, you guys. That's Jim Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about Billy Joel? I don't know. <laughs> so you picked <laughs> the song Getting Closer. 
Getting closer from the bridge. From the bridge with Billy Joel and Sidney Lauper. Now I'm going to share a little bit of I advertised it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to share a little bit of trivia about that. Cindy Lauper ain't in that song. That turns out to be true. The So that's great trivia, but that's not this week's trivia question. She was actually Code of Silence. Code of Silence. So here's my question also for you. Also on the bridge. Also on the bridge. So here's my question for you. Would you like to talk about getting closer <laughs> without Cindy Lauper? Or would you like to talk about Code of Silence? And then I'll pick for the next episode, whichever one we don't talk about. Oh, look at that. What would evolution do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, either choice is good because they're just, you know, what song has the most, is most likely to survive? <laughs> Well, in that case, I would say Getting Closer. Yeah, it's a better song. I think it's a better song. They're both good songs. They're both fine little songs. And um, it turns out that it's thematically very similar to the song we talked about last week, which I didn't realize when I picked the song that it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I liked that. I listened to it like an hour ago, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Topically on point. I wonder if some part of my brain <laughs> was like, oh, you should pick uh, the other song that's thematically similar to uh, Great Wall of China. Yeah. Getting Closer, which you don't know in the front of your brain because you don't even know where Cindy Lauper works. <laughs> but in the back of your brain, maybe those songs are connected. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It's Funny to me, by the way, and Alex did the same thing I did. Mine was worse. Uh, previous episode, you may not remember, I picked a song by Billy Joel that wasn't written by Billy Joel. <laughs> Mine's much worse. You're on the right album. She does appear on this album. So, I, in my, somewhere in my brain, I saw the album cover. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't read the track lists properly. <laughs> By the way, people on YouTube are just jerks. So I, I looked up the YouTube video, official video for the Cindy Lauper one, Code of Silence. Yeah. And it was, um, somebody says, oh, it's, it was nice of Cindy Lauper to do this song with him. And somebody else wrote, nice, she gets paid pretty good for that. Nobody was trying to fight. Ah. <laughs> uh... What, what did you think they were saying? Like, there was no insult to Billy Joel. There was no nothing. It was just somebody was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> nice. I'll fucking kill you. Yeah. You can do nice things for money. Yeah. The <laughs> best nice things you do are for money. I know a girl will do stuff for $200 an hour. No. <laughs> Hell no. yeah. No, it ain't that cheap. Uh <laughs> <laughs> getting closer from the bridge um i have no insight on the music is it like anything else what did you think of the music i thought you know at first i was like oh this might sound like somebody and just the more i was listening to it i was like i can't think of who it sounds like me neither um there's a lot of piano and keyboard that is not melodic. It's more in a, a rhythm. Yeah. Rhythm keyboard, sort of like Jerry Lee Lewis, but it didn't remind me of that. It was the same style, but I was like, this ain't a Jerry Lee Lewis song. Nope. It's just, it might be a, an actual Billy Joel song. That's what I was thinking. I was like, who is this like? I guess this is just Billy Joel, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it feels like a pretty... And again... um. When he, I think, is passionate and being personal on a topic, it might be the most uh, Billy Joel songwriting. The most, yeah. Jewelry, like, I don't, you know, this is about me for real. Yeah. So I'm not going to pretend to be Mick Jagger um, because <laughs> uh, I mean this one. Yeah. 
um, that could be. It would, that, it would seem crazy if he was like, I'm going to spill my guts on this personal topic, but like Sting. <laughs> right. Yeah. That tracks. I think that makes perfect sense. According to, I was watching something, and Billy Joel apparently always writes the music first, is what he said. Huh. I don't know if that's really true, but I think it's probably in a generalized sense true. I bet it's true. Yeah. Because he was talking about how somebody had he was he was it was in a video about him choosing to work with Sidney Lauper. And right. somebody was asking him, it's probably Howard Stern, it was probably the Stern interview, where he asked him why he doesn't end up working with more artists throughout his career. And he said he doesn't. He doesn't like writing the lyrics to someone else's music. It doesn't, he does, he's not good at it. It's not something he enjoys. Right. And he's not a lyrics first person. Okay. I believe that. So I wonder, but in a case where it's such a personal song like this, that feels like if it's true, I think maybe he at least knew what the topic was. I'll bet, yeah, I would bet he knows like at least the topic and like a phrase, a key phrase of some kind or a chorus. Um, but I believe that he doesn't write the words first based on how many times we've run into really janky <laughs> lyrical situations. Yeah. Oh, it's very clear effort to make something fit. Yeah. And something in an extra syllable or a woohoo that doesn't... <laughs> <have> <laughs> Really ran out of words yeah of music and as you've often said you like how pretty the piano is and that's your first attraction to billy joel well i don't know if it's your first but one of the big attractions is the fact that it's just such nice music yeah it's lovely melody yeah in this little song which is not you know it's not a lot of pretty piano playing but it is melodic and lovely mm-hmm and uh, a rare uplifting song. <laughs> yeah. So, and the uh, topic that he was in a bad mood about last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, yeah, and the uh, vocals are good. Good vocals on this. Yeah. And, uh, uh, would you like to start or should I start? Hmm. Well, we'll never remember who started last week. No. And I won't research it. <laughs> Could you? Do you have a spreadsheet? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd have to. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Okay. I don't know why my lyrics are in a weird font. Yeah. Perfectly nice shape of these lyrics, by the way. Lovely shape. Very appropriate. Yeah. I went searching for the truth. <laughs> but in my innocence, I found all the con men and their acrobats who stomped me in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's great. It's and... great. Already it's proof that uh, they wrote the lyrics later. Yeah. Because of the phrase stomped me in the ground. Right. It it has... too, but that didn't fit. Stop me on the ground might have been a better way to hide that fact. <laughs> yeah. Stop me in the ground. Yeah. Uh, acrobats is, I like acrobats. It's a good word to sing. I don't, me, know, I don't know what that means. Here's what I think it means. Okay. I think the acrobats, all the con men on there and their acrobats who stopped me in the... I think maybe he means acrobatics, but it didn't fit. <laughs> because, or to make it fit, I think the acrobats could be, you know, the lawyers and the tricks, and the, this is how they get you to sign this, and this is how they get you not to notice. Gotcha. And his innocence, because to me, that's what it feels like. It feels like, they got their tricks, and when they do those tricks, you end up signing, you know, you end up signing a contract that 
<laughs> and you, if you knew better, you wouldn't assign that. All right. I like that. So they're uh, metaphorically, they're acrobats, but they're probably lawyers. Yeah, that's what I think. All right. Um, I'll keep going because it's a chunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I count up their percentages, I know they're getting rich, but they haven't taken everything. Those paybacks are a bitch. <laughs> I like that. I've it's... all hated the phrase payback is a bitch. Oh, yeah? I don't know why. I think I just maybe grew up with a father who complained about everything being a bitch. Yeah. Well, you know, his lawn is a real bitch. Right. I just never <laughs> have liked that use of bitch. There are a lot of pl a lot of uses I do like that I won't go into. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, is it because maybe it's also partly because the specific usage payback is a bitch is almost always said by somebody who is saying it in a context that isn't justified. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's usually an asshole who is just hurting someone for the first time. Yeah. Ah, payback. And you're like, what? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, and nobody did. And it's almost always, if they're paying you back for something, it's out of proportion. Yes. It's always like, you didn't buy me lunch, so I set your house on fire. Payback's a bitch. <laughs> yep. And the other reason I don't like it is just because it's a cliche. Yeah. And, you know, um, writers are usually want to avoid cliches or asked yeah uh, present something original see so now I here's I love a cliche yeah this is why i like it in this case mm -hmm. because it is a cliche but then when you're talking about something so very personal it feels good to me in a way to use a cliche because it feels like no, I'm not giving you the idea of what this experience might be. This is the experience. Uh huh. And sure. you and you know what? F those guys. They look. They tried to take. They're getting rich, but guess what? I'm now. I I get it now. Yeah. And so I feel like it. For me, it kind of works, but I get why it wouldn't because it's definitely a cliche. Yeah, and it's just a weird thing because you know it. He's a, a middle-aged man at this point, and it does seem like a thing like shitty teenagers say. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, well, it'll say about like Paul Rudd is perennially like looks like a child or whatever, right? Or whatever they looks young. Billy uh -huh. Joel is perennially a shitty teenager. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did sell himself that way. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, only it's so funny because truly when I see him now, I'm like, he literally is this first time I've ever seen him where he just seems really happy with himself. I'm so glad he got there. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we uh, we watched and heard all about it on the way there. Yeah. I think if he wrote an album now, if he decided to, it would probably be the weirdest, most perfectly positive album that you'd be like i don't know if i like this yeah it might be a little dreamy i mean some of the later songs are like that yeah this song is a lullaby for my baby like, all right how would it great would it be if you put in an album and one of them songs was called advice and you're like oh no and the whole song is about how i don't have any advice for you you seem like you're doing fine <laughs> If anything, I'd take some advice from you. Oh, God, that'd be a good song. Can I have some advice, please? <laughs> so I may or may not take it, but I'll give it a chance. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> uh, oh, these are good ideas. He should, I, he already did this song with uh, Cindy Lauper. He should do one with us now. We should do one with us, or Bruno Mars should do this song with us. Oh, dude, yes. Dude. Yeah. Come on, second. Bruno. Come on, Bruins. Uh, right. Though I've lost quite a lot, I am still in control. I like that. Yeah. 
They can keep what they've got, but they can't have my soul. That's a good, that all makes sense. It's a good, it's a nice, also a little double play on soul. Yep. Because if anything, this is a little bit of a soul song. Absolutely. Um, and more honest, like soul, but truly like him, not trying to be somebody else's version of soul, but Billy Joel. Yeah. yeah. And if I don't have this all worked out, still I'm getting closer, getting closer. I like that. Yeah. I still have far to go, no doubt. A reference to the band, no doubt. No, it isn't. <laughs> but I'm getting closer, getting closer. That's nice. I like that. And I don't mind the repetition because it is a thing you, that's like a worthy repetition. It is a thing you would repeat when you're oh, getting closer, getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. Artistically, it makes sense. And it is, like you said, it's a much more positive sentiment regarding the same topic yeah which now isn't this weird though because wasn't this one first was this one first yes so he's like you know what i i and i've done that in my life by the way and i find that very funny i've done that in my life where i'm like i'm at peace with this you know what no i'm not <laughs> i thought of a new thing to be mad about and now I'm mad. <laughs> Or, well, different set of managers. And when it happened again, he was like, oh, F <laughs> this guy, God. It was getting closer. Um, I would love to know, I can't remember the uh, time frame where all that happened. Because it, it sounds to me like he got ripped off and then like wrote this song and made peace with it. And then had to go to court a bunch of times and get oh. back over again. <laughs> yeah. And learn the details and the, the amounts. And then he got mad and was like, freaking Great Wall of China. Could have yeah. Been and you know what? The thing we, uh, so Great Wall of China, when we, we first didn't analyze it, but then we read about it, which I think is a great way to do it because we wanted just to start, and we hit it pretty close. But yeah. one of the things you mentioned was that in an interview, he had apparently said, Screw it. I'm just going to say what I think. Yeah. And so this also could be him being honest, but thinking this is this is how I should be. So trying to manifest peace. <laughs> right. Or trying to convince us or himself. Like, yeah. Oh. And, and a little paranoia, like, well, I can't be too mean because maybe they'll sue me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, which one feels more honest? I mean, I guess the other one. The other one to me feels honest and naked. This one feels honest, but not naked. This feels a little more uh, still honest, but processed through, through <laughs> processed through his intellect. Yeah. And rather the other one just felt like a regurgitation of feelings. Yes. And the other one was aimed at the perpetrator yeah this one is not this is feels like a meditation right some yeah maybe they're both just very honest but different ways to approach that because i still you know i have that with i'm sure you do too just you know mad about something but then you think in trying to be a better person you think about well okay they did wrong but what did i do that was wrong in what sense am i responsible for the uh ship i'm driving so yeah and then you're like well not at all i did nothing <laughs> i did nothing they're all wrong goodbye idiots <laughs> and then you get mad again <laughs> uh, yep. um what was ripped off by professionals is not all that it seems while i must live up to contracts i did not give up my dreams that seems very specific yeah. And while I must live up to contracts. So whatever chicanery went down seems to involve him signing a contract that had some uh, some acrobats went through it first. Yeah. Set him Mul up. Multiple um, recording artists, um, Marvin Gaye is a good example, have had at some point to record an album 
after the fact of knowing that the profits were not going to go in their own park pocket and still had to do it. Yes. So I could certainly see some version of that or some tour where he's like, uh, this tour is just to pay off the bad deal I made, but. Right. This is just to get back to square one. Yeah. Uh, to dig out of the hole I'm in. Yeah. Uh, Lou Reed famously had an album like that. Where it was like, they basically put a gun to his head and like, you owe us one more album. And it's like, all right. And he just made the shittiest album. <laughs> That he could imagine. That's um, so great. So great. And he was like, here you go. You didn't say it had to be good. Bye. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Marvin Gaye one is he had to make an album where all the profits went to his ex-wife. Oh. And title of the album? Here, my dear. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep. God damn it. I do love a, a petty uh, album. Yeah, absolutely. God, yes. Obviously, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here on this podcast. That's right. I must live up to contracts. I did not give up my dreams. If I see it as experience, it hasn't gone to waste. Good advice. Advice to himself. Yeah. That feels like a new move. <laughs> yep. <laughs> lately all the missing pieces have been falling into place i feel like he's in therapy about it or something yeah yeah this is all very healthy very yeah. very healthy this is not at a time when you're driving your car drunk this is a good yeah this is yeah. like sitting out on the pier with a mug of hot chocolate like yeah what if I if I see it as experience, I had something like that with my trainer where I fucked up my shoulder working out with him. And he's like, "Ah, good. Now we know where it's weak." <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll buy that once. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "All right, then I'm gonna shoot you in the gut just to see how your gut is." <laughs> uh, yeah, the skin's a little weak. Okay, now uh, now we know. You could have known that. No, no, this is the only way. Trust me. I'm a trainer. <laughs> I have a certificate. <laughs> wow. That's pretty great. So that, like you said, meditation. I mean, I think you hit it right on the head there. That, yeah. Uh, and if I could go back and start over somehow, I would not change that much. I like this because I like that he doesn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because that would be a uh, clear and obvious lie at this point. Yeah. That, whether on purpose or accidental, is a nice, uh, you know, reanalysis of a cliche people say. If I could go back, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing. Really? Nothing. All right. You wouldn't floss more? You wouldn't? Yeah. God. You wouldn't, knowing what you know now, call home at a particular day and say, hey, don't let the dog out today. <laughs> That's what I'd do. Oh, no. Yeah. Man. Yeah, there's a sad story to that. <laughs> but... There's a hundred things like that. You, I, yeah. I, I would have never worn flip flops in the desert. Oh, yeah, that's a sad story. I'd change that. God. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. I would not change that much. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes, I would floss and I would wear shoes in the desert. Yeah. Otherwise, pretty good. Yeah. Knowing what I know now, though there have been sins I will regret, still, I'm getting closer, getting closer. I don't have all the answers yet. And, and there's some nice optimism. By the way, you won't have all the answers, but oh well. It might be a little delusional. Yeah. I think we all have suffered from the notion that, yeah, boy, if I, I'm almost, yeah, no. That's a... Almost figured out women. Okay. Yeah. No. 
It is uh, at the turn of the century, I think. There was somebody, it was like when trains were a big deal, somebody famously said that he figured that as far as technology goes, they know all that they need to know. And it's a funny, famous quote from that time period. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when they're like, oh, well, we got trains now. There po can't possibly be another thing. <laughs> Done, well, man. I don't have all the answers yet, but I'm getting closer, getting closer. So here's what I like so far. For I end up reading the ones that are they getting closer, but they're different. So it's not like I'm just reading the same thing because it's a good reassessment of, yes, here's we've got troubles, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, just chugging along. I like that. It's very nice. And it's nice that it isn't a big uh phrase that he comes back to it's just yeah it's not a big important idea like i am an innocent man <laughs> or it's still rock and roll to me yeah getting close it's been it's almost it's very jewish yes i'm getting, kidding are you happy ira getting close <laughs> okay Good for you. <laughs> it's not very woke. Sorry. The fact that you said it's very Jewish is a nice uh, lead into the Lex out of lyrics you're going to be reading. <laughs> oh, good. Do, do, do. Let me just see. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a mark for every shyster. Huh? Shyster. I'm going to pause. To Google, how it's, offensive is that term? I think it's could. I I would bet its derivation isn't as bad. It's more association when people say it. It's like eating watermelon is never offensive, but it's the speaker makes it so. Oh, I, yeah, I'm here to tell you, it is a uh, Yiddish word. See, yeah. So. How could it be anti-Semitic? Exactly, it isn't. But exactly what I'm saying. It's just right. people co-opted it to mean, ah, you guys. Right. A tricky Jew. Yeah, but that's not it, what it is. It's our word. Yeah. Also, I'm thinking of Shylock. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a horribly offensive term that no one uses anymore, I think. I feel like yeah. I haven't heard of that one. I don't, yeah, because I think... Because Shylock's the character, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think now if you use the word, it's because you're referencing the character now. Right, it's gone back into the classroom. Which is <laughs> fine. That's a fine place to reference it. Yeah. I'm a mark for every shyster from Topanga to Berlin. <laughs> I love it. That is great. Yeah, that con men and acrobats it's just a, a good pairing of words that sound funny together yeah and topanga canyon right canyon yep topanga canyon i think is a place where like a lot of music people live or lived in the mm -hmm. 60s 70s i think still do yeah sure the uh the acrobats who prey on them or mm -hmm. also live around there absolutely <laughs> Topanga to Berlin. I wonder if those are specific references to particular shysters he had trouble with. Like, uh, is there a guy in actual Berlin? Yeah, or is it a reference? Um, it could be a, a guy in Berlin, or it could be a reference to a particular bit of money he had to pay out from a tour that included Berlin. Could be, or it could just be like a, a place that's far away from Topanga. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which is the most likely, I guess, of those scenarios. And I should have learned to kick them out as soon as they crawled in. Great. Great. So to every bank in Switzerland that stores my stolen youth. I love that. Yeah. So great. Yep. I'm all right because despite the laws... You cannot hide the truth. Great. 
Yeah, man, that is wonderful. That is clear cut. It's like zippy, kicky language. Yeah. And love it. And it's <laughs> positive. Like the yeah. guy stole millions of dollars from you. Yeah. And I, I'm all right. Because despite the laws, which is interesting, like the, the law is not on Billy Joel's side in this case. Yeah. And the law is part of the enemy. Contract law, man. Yeah. Sign an ugly contract. And it's like, like the modern example, like Tasha, the stuff she had to put up with was just foul. Yeah. And, you know, the um, uh, Taylor Swift, that whole nonsense. It's like every, and it's same thing. It's like, here's the talented person. Here's the seedy jackass that knows you're young and don't know contract law. Yeah. And yep. I know I'm going to dangle this money in front of you, get you to sign quick. You know, when you could have spent a little extra money on advice from a lawyer, but yeah. Yeah, from a, a lawyer on your side. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. And I, you cannot hide the truth. And that's true. That's great because that's like, okay, you got the money, but everybody's going to know what an ugly piece of garbage you are. That's the last money you'll get. Yeah. In my every bank i like just addressing a line of the song to the bank <laughs> <laughs> so to every bank in switzerland that Lord. stores my stolen youth good really good nice flow too it does feel nice it doesn't feel like yeah. a hamstring phrase it's just it oh, all that, that's good poetry stores and stolen in the same sentence is great yeah yeah god bless very nice. And although you will say I am still too naive, but I have not lost faith in the things I believe. Great. You didn't and, break me. Yep. And if, he, and if I don't have this all worked out, still I'm getting closer, getting closer. I still have far to go. Another reference to the band, no doubt. Really great band. I mean, we all like that band. I bet they had some contract issues. They were very popular, young and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what now it has to be no doubt referenced to Topanga Canyon we all know no doubt is a California band it's clearly it's about no doubt we've discovered the second level <laughs> what a great bit of lyrics very nice he was a, a very good writer at this point yeah um, this album almost exclusively we'll, we'll find out next week has uh, well written tight lyrics. Yeah. And a lot of it is stuff that's like personally important to him. It's yeah. Like Brand is on this album. This album didn't do great. No. Which is okay. That's very, my friend Tom and I, because we will go see the Bare Naked Ladies in concert, and he will often say of particular Bare Naked Ladies newer tunes, he'd go, man. Take the song, what they should do is get, you know, this young artist or whoever to record it because these are all great hits. It's yeah. just, you know, the industry tends to stop wanting to listen to you. And yeah. it's not kids' fault because kids want to see somebody they relate to in their artists. More than fair. It has ever always been the case, you know the first person to get pissed off about it was probably Bing Crosby because he was mad about that young upstart Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and then Frank Sinatra went through it with Elvis, tried to do a duet with him, which is te was terrible, but also entertaining. Of course. It has never not been the case. <laughs> never not been the case. And uh, it's such a great thing that Billy Joel was just like, I'm going to stop writing stuff. I'm just going to do my shows. And old people will come. Yeah. Great. And so will young people, it turns out. Not a ton of them. Not in the yeah. same numbers. I just ordered some uh, rigatoni bolognese. Ah, rigatoni bolognese off of uh, um, Innocent Man, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to come by and sing it in a minute. <laughs> ah.
uh, uh, good little tune. Well, before the food gets here, we better do a few things so that you can then go eat. So first, that this business. is pretty easy. Oh, is it? It is once you get it. No, uh, is that is that a root beer rag? Root beer rag, baby. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna need the root beer rag. I was thinking I would like to think of a clue for that song because I just found it funny, <laughs> and I was right. You got it right away. That was great. I was like root beer. What the where? Oh, right. It's a title. <laughs> yep, and because that's all you could get. No lyrics. I listened to that earlier today. It's really good. I bet you he meant to put lyrics to it. It's like there's no way I could put lyrics to this. I don't want to have to sing that fast. This is doing too many things. And what if it's a hit? I have to do it all the time. And I think I was listening to it. I could wasn't sure. There's some vocalizations in it, right? In the recording. Um, yeah, there's like some laughing or something. Yeah. Going on. Very like Barbara Ann style. Yeah. Very the root beer rag is pretty damn good, actually. I there, here's a funny thing that happens in my house now with Alexa. Uh, no matter what I pick for it, like all. I have it set so that I'll pick a song and then Alexa will generate a playlist. Right. And the running joke in our house, because it's true, is I can pick anything. And Alexa will eventually go, well, yeah, but you're clearly going to want to hear some Billy Joel. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what I pick. <laughs> I could start with Kesha and eventually they're like, yeah, but you want to hear some Billy Joel, right? And, you know, she's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, yeah, this is similar, right? Come mm -hmm. on, Jim. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Yeah. Listening to R&B for three hours. Yeah. So if I play Bach, I'm sure eventually they'll go, well, Bach was a composer. Billy Joel's a composer here. Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, it'll just stop playing anything else. Yeah. I'll request this. Did you mean scenes from an Italian restaurant? Well, no, but go ahead. <laughs> Call hospital? Oh, no. Okay. Just do Billy Joel. <laughs> Have you fallen? <laughs> Bonked your head? <laughs> uh, hey, uh, speaking of the keyboards being played. Yes. Uh, you know who else plays keyboards on that song? On? Not just Billy Joel playing piano. There's also an organ being played. On Oh, on Ruby or Rag? No, on this very song here. Getting oh, closer. okay. Getting closer. Getting closer. Yeah. Um... Oh, you're right. Yeah, because this was a do because this wasn't exactly a duets album, not really. Not exactly. But it was an album with guest stars. Oh, and uh, it wasn't Cindy Lauper. I know that. <laughs> well, you established that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's not Ray Charles because he's on another track. Another track. Elton John. No. No. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's weird they never recorded anything together with all that touring. Yeah, they don't dislike each other, but um, let's see. Um, so it wasn't Elton John. It's 86, right? Mm -hmm. 86, so it's an artist that at least was active then, so it's not going to be Ben Folds. Um, it's not going to be Ben like Folds. Closer to the, <laughs> the vibe. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So if it's not him, and then what we're looking for, another piano guy. Remember that song, The Piano Guy? <laughs> um, uh, go ahead and sing your stupid song, Piano Guy. It's like when he's not good. And they say, I know exactly why, what you're doing here. <laughs> you're not a man, you're a guy. Yeah. Yeah, the friend is a friend of mine, but I have to pay for my drinks. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, so not Elton John. Kesha. I, I don't have a chance at this. I know. Is it a Steve Winwood? Steve Winwood. Okay. I wouldn't have gotten that because he that's a name that won't pop into my head. One and of those but, guys. It was just like, had a good old career, and yet it reminds me of uh, Todd Rundgren. Yes! You tell a kid today about Todd Rundgren, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, he was very good. Yeah. 
just didn't get that famous because he has a weird name. Do me a favor. Try to remember the name of the band that did the th song, The Things You Do for Love. A big hit. Right. Never What's the name of that band? Things that did for love, like walking in the rain and the snow. That one? Yep. I uh, couldn't tell you. And if you see the name, the next time I ask you, you still won't be able to tell me. You oh, can't God. remember it. I see it on the list. It's something like 10CC or something. Oh, 10CC. And I'm sure. like, how is anyone ever supposed? That's your problem, 10CC. It's very funny. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. Rundgren is the same thing. You probably know his songs by him. But if you bring him up, you're going to go, I don't know who the fuck that is. You're like, you do. You're like, no, I don't. And you, you're mad about it for some reason. Oh, you're real mad. <laughs> and then they, eventually they dragged you out of Target. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not before you made your point. That's right. I made my point. You don't know who Todd Rundgren is. Nobody does. He doesn't know. <laughs> He's playing a song in concert. He will go, who did this? That was you. Oh, okay. Well, there's another I cover. I'm going to play some covers tonight. <laughs> who wrote that? Really? <laughs> oh, it's a good song. I always wondered who wrote that. To go into music. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, good. oh, my goodness. Thank you for making time to record. Hey, bud. It's uh, my favorite thing. Oh, nice. I love yeah, doing it. Sex. Sex my favorite thing. Yeah. It's good, too, though. Sex used to be my favorite thing. It's less and less my favorite thing. Mm. It's I'm I'm perfectly okay with it. I'm probably fooling myself about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for so long. Yeah. Life is about pursuing that. Yeah, it is a bizarre thing. Cause I I'll say this and then I'll let you go have dinner, but I'm always amazed at like after sex, the how you have all this clarity about life and stuff. And yeah. who who wants that? That's a good point. <laughs> so if that's the price, I don't know if it was ever worth it. I yeah, know. Just keep that stuff inside. You're like, yeah, yeah, this was great. This was great. Oh, maybe I'm not as talented as I thought. <laughs> Let's stop doing that. <laughs> as long as my jizz stays inside me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be a great porn, by the way, where at the end, both of them are regretful and quiet, and that's the longest part of the porn. Oh, no. 